get caught in the flames of a nasty real estate closing. Did you know that in Florida, the consumer has the choice to pick your title company? So why not choose? And don't let someone else choose your fate. As a former firefighter and best-selling author, Kevin Thatcher of Independence Title will be your lifeline for your next real estate transaction. Kevin founded Independence Title in 2003 on the premise of going in the deal together and leaving the deal together, leaving no one behind. You have a choice, so choose wisely. Call Kevin today before it's too late. 754-200-3883 or visit TitleRate.com. That's 754-200-3883. Or titlerake.com. And now, welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Podcast. My name is Kevin Toucher, the founder and CEO, that's right, Chief Everything Officer here at Independence Title. And I say Chief Everything Officer because I bring so much value to our clients today we have an unbelievable interview this is going to be probably one of the best interviews we've ever done and and i'll tell you why in a little bit but uh i'm bringing on serial entrepreneurial entrepreneur joel gandara i met him through a uh organization called entrepreneurs organization which is a fancy way of saying we're all successful there every person in that organization is successful and we're going to go over a little program that joel has i'm going to ask him a couple of questions he's got something unique that he's launched in the last couple of years uh and and i just think it's fantastic to bring this to our audience so joel welcome to the show today thank you kevin glad to be here that's a lot of pressure to say this is one of the better shows i hope it's just based on your questions not my answers yeah, it's going to be fun. This is going to be fun. And it's good because I know you, right? I know you pretty well. And, and we're going to go through just a couple of things. First, let's just tell everyone, you know, I say serial, serial entrepreneur. People are always like, what does that really mean? I know you moved here at a very young age and you started your first business at the age of 10. Most people can't say that. Um, so tell the viewers out here just a little bit about you, the Reader's Digest version about you so they get to know you a little bit. Yeah, it's a long story. I'll tell you in a few seconds. I came here on a boat from Cuba, fleeing communism when I was a kid, grew up poor, and hustled from day one. As soon as I saw the opportunity to make money, and the first opportunity was at 10 years old, roughly, in fourth grade, I bought some trading cards. They cost me about a nickel each when I'd buy packs, and then I'd resell the cards for 10 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents, a dollar, sometimes maybe $2, and I started to make money. I learned about supply and demand, and I learned that if I make a couple dollars, I can go to the donut shop and buy myself a donut after school. And that was a lot better than the very healthy lunch my parents packed me. And that turned me on to what else can I do? I started selling some figurines. Uh, in high school, I sold chocolates and netted $30 every single day. Uh, not all of high school, but like junior, senior year. And I started making real money. I thought $30 back in the 90s, and plus my part-time job after school. And I've hustled ever since. I own multiple businesses. Um, I invest in other businesses. And that's it. I, I think a serial entrepreneur, when I hear that, is somebody that's always looking for opportunities, whether to improve their business and find new avenues to make money or just starting new businesses, not just to start them, but because they see a demand and they say, I can either do that better, cheaper, faster than somebody else. Let me get into it. And they're not, a, okay, maybe they're scared and maybe they have that fear, but they, they don't let that consume them. And they say, you know, what? I'm going to give this a shot. You know what it is. You've done these sort of things. You did this in the last 30 days. Right. Yeah. So so and we're going to get into a lot of the, the new stuff about the stuff we're working on together and stuff, uh, because, you know, that's just proof of the pudding that, about being a serial entrepreneur. We came up with an idea and launched it the same day. It's like, here's the idea. Let's get it going. Let's start filling our, our group and our circle. Uh, you know, and, and I tell people all the time, you know, it's all about the people you surround yourself with. Uh, and that's why this call is just fantastic, because I've had such a great opportunity to get to know you over the last uh, year and uh, more more recently than than previously. And we're just doing great things and we're reaching the masses and, and doing some wonderful things. Joel's actually sitting right now in his son's bedroom. So you see the signs behind him. Like that's not what you typically see in, in your child's bedroom, right? Stay hungry, stay humble, right? I mean, think about this. Like he's breeding this not only in himself, but into his children, into his wife. He, he's got uh, very successful children. Talk briefly about your family a little bit, how important that is to you. Uh, and, and how your kids all have jobs. Yeah. So married 21 years, just hit that a couple days ago and have four yeah. kids. Thank you. Four kids. Oldest is 17, 16, 
There's always a birthday. Hold on. 11 and 9. So four kids every quarter, there's a birthday. I have to calculate that. They all have their own businesses. They all have uh, two of them. The two older ones have jobs and businesses. And I, the oldest one is 17. He's at the Army. He's in his boot camp right now at the Army, uh, basic training. So that's kind of a job for now. He's getting a paycheck there. And he goes in as an E3 because of JROTC. He's a, he's a corp, he'll be a corporal once he gets out of boot camp. And he's got a chocolate business. He buys wholesale chocolate bars and makes a ton of money, $30,000 saved in the bank at his age. And the way we do this, and all my kids have savings and they all have little businesses. The way that we've created this is not by telling them they have to do it, but rather telling them, they might want to look into making money because guess what? We're not leaving you anything. Now, here's the beauty. They don't listen to any podcasts I'm on, so I can tell you it's a lie. We're going to leave them money, but they don't know that. And by the time they watch this, maybe they'll be old enough where they'll have seen that I'm already helping them out. But that fire is lit under them because they think, well, nobody's coming to help us. We're on our own. And by the way, how do I teach them that? College is not paid for by me. Car is not paid for. Uh, car insurance, nothing. In fact, when you turn 18, my son knows what's happening when he gets back in August from boot camp. He'll be 18. Uh, rent starts at $200 a month. And he's very clear on that. Financially, he's been independent since 16. And I mean his shoes, his clothes, everything. He wants to go out to dinner with his friends. It's his money, not mine. The 16-year-old just started that. He's independent now. He does his own things. And at 18, he knows what happens. Rent's going to be charged. And the little ones, you know, we, we hit milestones where they have to do certain things. The little ones, it's very easy. They just make money and put it in the bank. But that's how we're teaching them. And that's what I think we're creating independent people that already I find them to be more independent than some adults. Awesome. Well, now let's turn, let's flip the switch over to adults. So Joel is, is in multiple, multiple businesses. He owns real estate. He's, he's in e-commerce business and he's exiting some businesses and, and just constantly doing some things, but we've created something super unique over the last couple of months. Joel had a, a program. He, he was putting a bunch of his friends, uh, class number one, he put a bunch of his friends through a program using someone's book. Uh, and then all of a sudden we figured out how Joel, like you get your own book, you got your book. We wound up, I know you got a copy of it probably there somewhere. Uh, so, so he created his book and class number two, three, four, five, they're starting to use his book and, and you're creating this, this, this vision for men. So you, you put it into your children, into your family, into your employees, but now you're putting it into a bunch of men throughout the entire world. I know there are people all over the world in your class. So tell everyone a little bit just about how your 31 day program evolved. You know, we'll talk a little bit about the advanced stuff. I want to ask you some questions, uh, how it relates to men and, and things that you do to help them. But talk a little bit about the program. Yeah. So the book that you mentioned, I do have it right here. It's 31 days to become a better man. That's what it looks like. And the book and it, the program is the book. It starts with the book. And that's step one. Kevin, you were early on one of the guys that went through the book and then if anybody's listening kevin has phenomenal ideas so he's my co-founder on all the rest of it i just had an idea let's just start a class did the class kevin did it and liked it and said there's got to be more to this we got to keep it going that's where we developed that but here's the basic you go in for 31 days the cost is ridiculously low because i coach entrepreneurs and i charge them a serious amount of money and and we do a lot of great things but here it's it's a nominal fee. As of today's date, it's $199 for 31 days. Plus, you got to pay 20 bucks to buy a book on Amazon or my website. And then we go through it together in a class. And usually it's like 24 guys or so, sometimes a little bit more. And we go through it. We go day by day. And all we do is a Zoom call once a week to check in on each other, make sure we're all doing great. Someone can't make it. We'll record it, send it to them. And the other thing is just, every, oh, and we have a WhatsApp group where we communicate. But every day, you do a thing. Whatever that thing is for the day, there's usually a physical challenge you got to do and some kind of mental work or a conversation you have to have with somebody or something you got to sit down and think about and write it out. And those, it's a, it's a filtering system because first of all, for you to be a guy, it's all for men only for you to be a guy who says, you know what? I don't have that big of an ego. I'm willing to work on myself for 31 days to become a better man. Some guys have an ego and says, no, I'm already great. And I'm not going to join that. But that already attracts the right people. And everybody says it who's in the classes. How did you get this quality of people that are also like-minded and go-getters from all different industries? How'd you get them in here? And I say, I think it filters itself out. If you're willing to work on yourself, then you're going to get the right people. Now, that's step one. We go through it. 
And then that's where Kevin's idea came in is where, what do we do afterwards? Cause everybody gets this great taste in their mouth and say, I'm a new person after 31 days. I saved a lot of money. I became a better husband. I became a better father. I'm learning more. I'm doing more things. I'm getting in better shape. But then after 31 days, 32, you drop and 33, you go down. So we started, uh, thanks to Kevin's idea, it's even a game changer for him, for me, for everybody. We started a maintenance program, if you will. Absolutely. And that's what we call the brotherhood. You see the logo up above and we have a couple programs. No, sure. We'll talk a little bit about it uh, in, a, in a little bit because I want to give obviously some viewers some some content. Right. We don't want to just talk about the program and what they can do. If they want to learn about the program, the link below uh, at my website, Kevin which goes to my V card. I put a link there. It says 31 days to become a better man. So let's talk about a strategy. What strategies, you know, whether it's your coaching or you're, they're going through your program, you have an entrepreneur that's just facing someone. What, what is, let's say, one strategy that someone can use to become a better man? And even women can use this. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not the guy to teach women, but several women have bought the book and told me, I've been doing the stuff in there and it's phenomenal. I don't, this is the first time I say that. I've been on a lot of podcasts. I don't share that. Because then I think, wait a minute, I carved out a niche. Let me be that niche guy. Um, so it depends where everybody is in their life. This is not a pre-recorded class where we just say, today's day one. Here's what you're going to do. And then day two. No, the reason it works is, is the accountability because we set you up with a phenomenal accountability partner in there. So you're going to answer to someone. But then you also have this whole group and this camaraderie and this brotherhood within each class of a bunch of guys who are going through it. And everybody says the same thing. I don't know anyone in here. I just joined. And all of a sudden, I feel so connected, like I've never been to people, right, with strangers from across the world. Um, but everybody's on a different path. So some days, uh, the strategy, the tactic, you know, I look at the book and, and one day, let me pull one out, is, is about feeling sorry for yourself, right? There's an exercise in my book about stop feeling sorry for yourself. And I go into stories. I'm not just telling you what to do. I tell you where I applied this in my life, some mistakes I've made in my life, or I've lost a lot of money, lost loved ones, whatever it is. Well, we're going to work on that. And maybe... Five of the 24 guys, they don't have an issue with this. They're really good. They've mastered this. Well, maybe the other 19 guys need a little bit of help with this. So every day is going to impact everyone differently. And interestingly enough, you know, they say the teacher arrives or the lesson arrives when the student is ready. So many guys have taken my class over and over and over. And you think, what are they doing that for? These are successful entrepreneurs with a lot of uh, good things going for them in, in their life, but yet they're doing the class. And when I ask them why they're doing it again, they always tell me a couple of answers like unfinished business, you know, something in that book that it hit me hard last time. And now I'm going to get in there to do it right this time. So even the same person could be doing something differently every or doing the same book every time and getting a different result each time. Right. Amazing. Um, think of one challenge, like something someone has brought to you. Obviously, you've been doing this. You're uh, filling class seven right now, which means you put 24 guys times six classes already. C can you think of one thing that, that someone's brought to your attention and, and what was done to solve it? Yeah. I'll tell you, man, there's always an issue, whether it's the intimacy, a lack thereof with their wife. And sometimes that's a lack of communication, like so many problems. Is there a lack of communication? So let's use that example. Uh, an issue on intimacy where maybe the, the guy wants this much and the wife's giving him a lot less. And then they have to have a conversation. That's actually a challenge in there. One of the days, talk about an awkward, uncomfortable conversation for some couples, not for all couples, not for most. So that's something where somebody might come to me and they might say it in the group. And then I book a call individually with everybody in the classes. So we have this quick one-on-one -on -one 15 minute call, but we go hundred miles an hour and we knock out a lot of good stuff where people have said, look, I'm having this issue in the class. We talked about it. What else can I do? Here's the, you know, I'll ask a few questions. And then we've come out on the other side of that with some really great things. But besides just like one-offs like that, I'll tell you some of the most standard things that I just keep hearing is my wife, my kids, it's like they're all respecting me more now. It's like they all, well, when you do a lot of push-ups and you start looking good and your kids are seeing you do push-ups in the house and they're seeing you do a little bit more exercise and they're seeing you take care of yourself. There's a hygiene day. There's a day to work on your why, to figure out why you're on this planet with exercises. You start doing these things, you start carrying yourself around a little bit different. Whether you mean to or not, doesn't mean you're cocky or aggressive or anything, but you lift your head a little bit higher when you're doing all these good things. And I think that's the most powerful impact that we have because it carries over to our wife, our kids, our neighbor, our anybody who's in our circle is going to start seeing a different you. Awesome. And, and I think it's great. My son, five years old, Jackson, does 
uh, push-ups and loves it. So, and then he likes to take his shirt off and show his muscles. And so it definitely uh, flows over to, to the people you surround yourself with. I mean, I've brought in, I, I think today we signed up person number 14 into your class. Uh, someone that I met today that I thought, you know, it's just, you know, people always ask me like, how do you recruit so many people versus someone else? And I tell them because I'm really finding the people that I know their why and I'm, I'm bringing them a solution to their problems. I'm not trying to sell them anything. Like, I don't care whether you take it or not. It doesn't benefit me financially. It, it just does. It has no benefit to me. I want you to be a better person. So here's a problem that you're facing where you share something with me and here's the solution. Um, so let's flip it over to, to coaching, right? Because you coach obviously some very successful people. What are some of the things that someone comes to you that, that needs coaching in business and, and maybe one strategy that, that you give them? Yeah. So here's the interesting thing. Everyone that hires me to coach them says the same thing. I need you to help me coach me for business. That's fair. Great. That's what I do. I've been running businesses for decades. The weird thing is, it happened today. Uh, I have a, a coaching client in Europe, very successful, doing great things. But guess what? The call today, like it is a lot of times, probably deals with 25% business. The other 75%, we're talking about that individual. And I'm not a psychiatrist, psychologist, or anything like that. But we bring up things from the past to see why they're seeing things a certain way. So we can have a little bit of a paradigm shift. We can start seeing, oh, wait, why are you seeing things that way? And then they realize it and they go, oh, crap, you're right. I don't need to see things that way anymore. Um, so the, that's that's just a general overview about how they hire me for one thing. We end up working on another thing. And guess what? It spills over to your business. Mm -hmm. Another thing is a lot of business owners are hiring me, whether they realize this part or not, because they're unorganized and they're all over the place. And they're managing one business and maybe they have a, a wife and one kid and they are drowning in a bucket. Well, if you organize your life in better ways, if you have employees that you can ask them to help you with this and hold them accountable. If you can spread out the work like that, you can now have a better position in your company, in your own company, rather than being the bottleneck and the employee. Because I doubt that people start businesses to be stressed out and working 14 hours a day, unless that's your thing. If that's what you want to do, go for it. But imagine you can make more money with a lot less work time and a lot less stress. That's what I like to focus on is how can you continue the success that you're having or grow it but organizing yourself and organizing your business. So this is, first of all, it's going to make you more money. It's going to be more enjoyable. You're going to be way nicer to be around. And lastly, you're kind of uh, really building enterprise value. Even if you don't see yourself selling this anytime soon, you build a business that runs itself and is profitable. Everyone's going to want to buy that. So that's a great exit strategy. Yeah. One of my best friends says, David says, uh, work smarter, not harder. That was actually the name of his real estate course you know, work smarter, not harder, because it's true. You want to be able to, you know, most of these people that are taking your classes are, are entrepreneurs, upcoming entrepreneurs. Some are, are employees of jobs and want to become entrepreneurs. And, and they're surrounding themselves just with some great people and sharing some great ideas and learning some of these strategies. But, you know, a lot of times you're coaching people, you know, they're left on an island. That's why this program is so great, because you're not on an island by yourself. You're with 24 other guys. And then if you upgrade to the next program, however many guys are in that, like you are surrounding yourself with a bunch of people so you're not on a lonely island by yourself, which is probably on one of the biggest complaints that a lot of entrepreneurs feel. And I was looking up some of the stuff, even like men, men don't um, open themselves up. Like men don't share the things that they're going through and the problems that they're facing and, and some of the issues that they're having, they keep it to themselves. So, you know, it's amazing to watch when you go through, and I was early on, right? I was class two, uh, to be able to watch how many of these men become so vulnerable and open themselves up and share things about their family and about their parents and about their siblings and about, like just the most amazing thing. So, I, I mean, it's great. Really is yeah. great. It's a game changer when you open up like that. And it's not that we're all crying and, and uh, wearing our emotions on our sleeve. Not at all. These are still guys. It's just that now they have someone that they can approach and say, hey, I'm having this issue, everyone. Here's what it is. And they share that. And then it could turn into just a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone else in the group, with me, and we start working on that. And a lot of them, it's beautiful when they come back and say, hey, guys, I presented this problem in the group last week, and I'm starting to resolve it. Here's what started to happen. And that is beautiful because that moment, that person went through it and learned some valuable lessons. But he just taught 23 other people, as well as myself, on top of that, he taught them how he solved it, what he did. And uh, that's a lesson for all of us. I think what I think of is like entrepreneurial therapy. 
right? Everyone goes to therapy. You go to marriage therapy, you go to personal therapy, kids go to therapy. Like everyone goes to therapy. Everyone should have a therapist. Uh, so I think of this as like entrepreneurial therapy. You're, you're surrounding yourself with other men uh, who are just doing some great things. Um, you know, and you yeah. said it, you said two things that I, man, I've seen this for decades and I've said it for decades. Being an entrepreneurial entrepreneur is one of the loneliest places to be on earth. Why? Because if I go to a dinner party and it's mostly W2s in there, I'm going to say, hey, guys, you know what? Last quarter, I didn't make any money. I lost this much. They're going to say, oh, look at this guy complaining about everything. Or if I say I had a phenomenal quarter, I made a million dollars. They're going to say, oh, look at this guy bragging. But you say that to other entrepreneurs and they get it. Hey, man, I feel your pain when you're not making money. And when you're making money, they feel that happiness for you, especially when you build a tight bond and a brotherhood with everyone. So so that's um, that's a, a fact. Entrepreneurs are lonely. The other one is men are very lonely. Like you said, men don't normally share their feelings. That's pretty uh, feminine. But when done in the right way, in the right place, the right context, a very, I hate to use the word safe, uh, but, you know, in a, in a place that just is comfortable and slowly gets comfortable. Some guys go through three classes before they really start opening up and they go, OK, this was well worth it. This is changing my life. So, yeah, entrepreneurs are lonely. Men are lonely. Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, let's talk about traits. So, so key traits for an entrepreneur. Let's just say you have a leader, an entrepreneur that going through your program. What are you seeing uh, that are some common traits of, of the men that go through your program or maybe some of the people you're coaching? Yeah, well, I can tell you traits of very successful entrepreneurs that I see. Most of the guys that go through the program are successful entrepreneurs. But like you said, some are employees and they're usually moving up through the ranks and they're go-getters. As far as traits, I'll tell you some of the most important ones. A lot of people get excited in the beginning and they get it started and then they fall off. That's not a good trait unless you have a support system. You can hand it off to your number two or number three and have them run with it. That's OK because you don't have to do everything yourself. But it's people with that ability to press on. Things are going to be tough. Things are going to get uncomfortable. It's a risk. Just being an entrepreneur. Uh, Elon Musk talks about that, right? It's like. Something about jumping down an abyss and trying to build a parachute on your way down while you're chewing glass or something. I think that's what he says. And yeah, that's a little graphic, but it is rough. You got nobody to go to most of the time. You may not have a coach. You may not have a proper mentor. Imagine being in a group where you're all each other's mentors, right? So that's a big one. It's being able to continue even when times get tough. It's asking for help is a really good one, which a lot of guys don't do. They just suffer and go through circles of anxiety and depression in their head. And, and, and they may not have the right people to go to. They may not have learned the right communication skills. That's a big one to be able to communicate and have that not just uh, logical and, and, and data driven way of speaking, but have emotional intelligence to know when to stop talking, to know when to ask for help, to know when to listen to it and put into a, into work. Um, there's also little fine things because I think in life, it's all about a bunch of things. Why are there 31 days in this book? Well, a lot of it are little tiny things like write a handwritten note to people, have this certain conversation. You start adding up these sorts of practices and man, over time you evolve. And I know 31 days sounds really short to say that my life is changing. Trust me, most of the guys that you know, it, the most of the guys who do this, their life is changing in that period of time. And none of it is like overwhelming difference that you have to take this massive amount of action. It's this little tiny bit every day. Right. All right. So let's talk. So we talk about being an entrepreneur, which is great. Um, I know one of the challenges a lot of people have, I have it myself, work-life balance. So talk a little bit about work-life balance. Like how important is it to have? I know you obviously have it uh, personally. So what is something you do to help the viewers out there you know, have that work-life balance to, to achieve greatness. Yeah. So one of them is stop making excuses. You can't tell me that, oh, I, you know, I just don't have time for my family, for working out, for planning a vacation, for you fill in the blank. When I look at your calendar and I see, well, let's say you documented every single thing you did and you spent two hours on the, tea, on the couch watching TV. You went to a bar with friends and got drunk. You did all these stupid things that don't serve you. Then you can't tell me that you don't have time. Also, yes, you worked all day. You were gone for 12 hours. How efficient were you? Were you just there putting out stupid fires that a virtual assistant can help you with, that a local person that you could hire can help you with? Is that what you were doing? Were you, you, you know, resolving every little fact of your, your business or were you focusing on big picture things? 
that frees up a lot of time. We see that over and over in the classes where guys will tell me, you know, I, first of all, some tell me, I don't know. I, I, I want to have a call with you because I want to sign up, but I'm not sure if I can, if it's for me, I don't have a lot of time. You know, we have a friend in common that you brought in. He told me that on a 15 minute phone call about 20 times. I just don't have time. Well, not only is he doing the class now, he's doing phenomenally well in his life. He's done multiple classes. He joined the brotherhood and all of a sudden he has all this time. Cause one of the things we look at is how are you using your time? Yeah. I, you know, it's not to brag, but I've learned efficiency over many years of being in business. And I know that in three or four hours, I could do what the average guy is doing in about 12 hours in business. Obviously, I don't do it all myself. I, yeah, I type 80 or 90 or 100 words a minute, but the, I'm not there doing all the work. I'm sending things off. Hey, can you take care of this, please? And can you do this, please? And then it, all the plates are spinning, but I'm not holding them. Other people are holding them. And that helps me grow my business. You know, the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss years and years ago, I read that. And it made me realize that's interesting. He was hiring people at like $12 an hour in India back then, you know, 15 years ago or whatever, to help him do his job. He wasn't even a uh, business owner. He was an employee. And he figured out a way to pay people a phenomenal salary, but do his job for him. And he makes all the rest of it. So I'm not saying that's a solution, but there are very good ways of becoming more efficient so that you do have that balance. My situation is different. I got out of the day to day in my late 30s. And I got to spend a lot of time and now getting into my late 40s. So the last 10 years, I've really spent it with my family. I don't have to work as much as I used to. Um, and fortunately, you do the work in the beginning. And I did. I really put my head down and, and made things work in the beginning so that later I got that freedom. And that's what I help guys figure out. Awesome. I know you're celebrating. Congratulations. Your, your 20th year in your uh, e-commerce business. We're celebrating our 20th year next uh, Friday, July 7th. Uh, is our 20th year in the business. So um, I work a lot with entrepreneurs. You know, I coach a lot of real estate agents. That's kind of my uh, niche in the business is I, I meet with real estate agents and teach them how to be better agents and uh, live more of a fulfilled life. So it's, you know, you're coaching entrepreneurs. I'm kind of coaching entrepreneurs. I'm coaching the agent themselves, obviously. And, and we look to earn their uh, closing business. And what I notice a lot, and I've been working, actually, it's funny because I was working with a few people in the brotherhood because uh, I taught when I talked to them, I used to be trained in disc profiling. Uh, so I was talking to them and it's like, you know, they're like, oh, guess what I am? You pin them in a second. Like I can tell exactly what your personality is and I know how you operate and how you function. How what is is, is that got to be a challenging thing when you're working with entrepreneurs, you know, because your personality is so driven, like get it done. No nonsense. Don't give me excuses. But then you get some of these other mixes of personalities. How do you deal with that stuff? Yeah, so I do believe that all of us are wired differently. I've had the the great benefit and honor of being coached um, by Jocko Willink, a former Navy SEAL and very successful entrepreneur, podcaster, author, New York Times bestseller multiple times. Uh, and I've realized something. We are all wired different. That guy sleeps four hours a night and he's okay. And he functions at a high level, trains jujitsu, lifts weights runs businesses. He could do all those things. Guess what? I can't do that. I need about seven hours, seven and a half hours every night of sleep. Now I can go a night or two with four hours and I'll get by, but man, after three days, it starts to hit me really hard. I'm not lazy. I'm very driven, but that's it now. So, so I like that. I have him Jocko as a guide to say, okay, that's an extreme, amazing human being who's born a certain way. I can't, get to that. I really believe I can't. That's fine. I know where I fit. You know, I'm five foot nine. I'm never going to play in the NBA. I could try as even if I was 20 years old, I will never play in the NBA. I just don't have the height and I don't have those skills. But what I can do is figure out what I'm good at, right? I played baseball. I was a pretty good second baseman. That's what my body type, that's what my skill level, that's how I can shuffle to the side, dive for a ball, throw it to first. I'm built for that. I think it's important, and I, I try to remind myself regularly, when I'm coaching someone and their skill set is here, I don't try to get them over here. They're not trying to become a replica of me. If I can motivate them in any way, if I can ask them the right questions to push them toward that thing they're really good at, I think that's fine. I don't think you have to become good at everything. It's nice to have a well-rounded balanced life. So your finances are in a pretty good place, relationship with your spouse, your kids, all of that, your health, everything's in a good place. That's great. But you don't have to become Warren Buffett. If you're an investor, you don't have to be him. The problem is that also we have social media showing us how perfect everyone's life is and how perfect the best person is at 
this one thing. But you don't have to be that. You got to be pretty good at some stuff, pretty bad at a lot of stuff. I'm bad at a lot of stuff. I can't uh, change a door handle for you. I, I just can't do that. I maybe hung up those pictures here. I don't remember. I probably didn't. Or if I took them off, they're probably like 10 holes behind it because I keep missing the mark. I'm a, not a good handyman. I can afford to hire somebody to be a handyman. If I really want to learn a little bit of it, I do it. I'm great at demo. You give me a sledgehammer, I'm phenomenal, and I have a blast doing it. I don't have the skilled labor to do certain things, and I don't need to be. Now, imagine I'm a, I, get, I hire a coach, and he's like, what are you kidding? Are you kidding me? you got to start building things with your hands and be a woodworker. It's not going to happen. That's not the right coach for me. Find the right person to work with that's going to see your strengths and say, all right, let's just become good, better at that. And it's more motivating. You're going to stay in the game. Your discipline is going to be better if you're doing that thing that you enjoy. That's why people say find your passion. If you work in what you love, you're never going to feel like you work. It's true because you're doing the thing that you're really good at. I'm never going to push somebody to become what I, I see and they see they're not going to be. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the guys in the brotherhood messaged me today because we were talking about they took the disc profile and they're like, oh, I got to learn to become. I said, no, you're not learning to become. It just needs to be your second dominant personality. So you continue with what you're doing. You just need to learn how to adapt some of those traits when they're needed. But you're not changing your personality. You're not going to change who you are. Who you are is is who you are. You need to learn to adapt to others and, and you know, or find people that can can be those personalities. So it's great. Um, so let's talk about, since you talk about being the handyman, tools in the toolbox. So obviously, you know, your your 31 day program is one of your tools. What other tools do you lean on and, and with, with other entrepreneurs or people going through the program that you offer them? As far as program within the? No, like, so like, as far as like you're coaching someone, what tools, resources do you direct people to? Like I tell people a lot of times uh, as real estate agents, I tell them, learn the disc profile and like you get tested and learn how to identify when you're walking into a listing appointment, what the primary personality is of the husband and wife and how you deliver your message to them. So I try and tell them like one of the tools in your toolbox should be personality profiling like you should know who you're talking to and how you need to sell them because the way you want to be sold is not the way they want to be sold which is why i think uh, i'm such a great recruiter for for your program because i'm selling them on what's important to them like i'm not trying to i'm not making commission selling anything like i'm literally just selling them something of value but i'm selling it in a way they need to hear it they need to see it they need to to feel it and that's why I think I'm so successful at it. So, you know, even in, in business, like what is a, a couple of resources maybe you rely on to help some of your clients besides obviously your own stuff and, you know, your own brain? Sure. So here's the interesting thing. It's I don't have a plan process other than the book where you go through and every day you do 31 different things that I think benefit you greatly. I don't have this. OK, you're coaching with me and we're on week three. Here's what you're going to do. A lot of it is conversation driven. I like to have conversations. I'm not good at a lot of things, but I'm good at some things. And one of them is reading for and looking for red flags, right? As we're having a conversation, I'm pretty good at finding some things that I'll ask. And they say, I can't believe you just asked me that. Yes, in my past, this happened to me. Let me explain it. And then we go deep. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a process of go, getting deep with conversations. From there, different things happen. Um, from there, let's say that you're having problems with your employees doing what you want them to do. Well, I've read about, I'm going to guess, I don't know the number exactly, several hundred, probably under a thousand, but about several hundred books on uh, improving yourself and doing better in business. I don't have those books in my hand to hand to people, but I have the lessons in my head. And as we talk, it starts raising flags because you say something, I go, oh, that's that lesson. I remember that. Okay. Well, have you considered this? Take a look at this book. I recommend a lot of books. I've written one, one, but I recommend probably 80 different books that I'm regularly recommending, depending on where that person is. Um, a lot of the time we can just cut to the chase and I can tell them, look, here's the big lesson in that book. If you read that book, it's going to address that issue that you've now told me a couple of weeks in a row that is the problem. So it's not a worksheet, a magical worksheet that I have. Um, but I do borrow from great men and great women who have written incredible books. Uh, so that, I'd say that's probably the, the number one resource that I have in my head from all the books that I've read, read and learned from. That was actually my next question for you was, was what's your favorite book uh, for the entrepreneur and, and maybe one thing of value from that book? 
Yeah, so I have to say a few because it's just I feel like I'm cheating on the others if I if I just say one. Um, an, a phenomenal book that took me from a fifty thousand dollar a year guy in my annual income to seven figure annual income, net income in my pocket. You know, like uh, without partners, just making good money twenty times more was the secret. When I read The Secret, I was in a low point in my life where I had a negative voice that would tell me, man, that's not going to work. What do you even think about that? Don't even bother. Don't go have a meeting with anybody about that. It's not going to work. Well, The Secret, that book by Rhonda Burns helped me start thinking differently. Like, you know what? Let's give it a shot. I don't know if it's going to work, but let me just pretend I'm a little bit more positive. Well, fast forward 20 years or so since I read that book, roughly. I'm a way more positive person. My default now, my autopilot is a little bit more positive. It's a lot more positive. It's a, yeah, this might work. Let me go have that conversation with Kevin and see what happens. When before I would have talked myself out of it. You know, we all have a little good angel on one shoulder and the bad devil angel on the other shoulder. My devil angel had a megaphone and he had tape on the mouth of that little angel and he wouldn't let him say the good things to me. Now it's the opposite. That, that devil, I hardly let him speak. And if he does, I don't listen to him. I talk myself out of why that stupid advice and I go with the good advice. Um, you know, I already forgot what the question was, but. Uh, we were talking about the books. What book? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. The secret. That was, secret. Uh, that was one. And by the way, I'm not going to tell you this book you haven't heard of. All the good lessons in life are already known. All right. those cliche sayings are there for a reason. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I read that when I was young and I called my dad and I told him about it. And he says, oh, you're reading that? Yeah, I read it 30 years ago. I go, oh, my God, it's been popular since then. And yeah, it's a popular book from like the 1930s, I think. Those lessons don't change. They've updated the book for modern times, but read the old one. It's so popular for a reason. It's because that's how humans think and how they act. And you want to win friends, win people to your side and influence others. You want to influence people. You want to get them to do what you want without coercion, without aggressiveness. Just like treat people really well. And all of a sudden, they want to be nice to you. That's really nice. Now, you can't fake it. It's got to come from the heart. You can't compliment someone over and over and it's fake. That's stupid. Um, so those are good books. Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink is a great book. I love the audio version because Leif Babin, his business partner and Navy SEAL partner, uh, both of them have phenomenal voices. They tell the story it's under your skin and you're feeling it and you get goosebumps and they're describing battles at war, but they translated it how that carries over in the business world and how you're responsible. Extreme ownership. You own all the results that come to your life. And when you have that attitude, you're not a victim anymore. You have control over your life. Now it's going to hurt at first to admit it hurts your ego. But once you learn to take care of that, you'll do much better. And the last one, uh, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. That's a really good book. Another extreme guy, crazy extreme. You don't have to be that guy, but get 1% of what he's doing and your life's going to be more impressive. Yeah, you, you picked some extreme people there, but you know, like David's, it, it's amazing to just follow him on social media. And it's like, just no excuses. And that's part of the stuff that you're creating. So now, now that we went through, and I appreciate you going through a bunch of questions, none of this was planned. Like I didn't send him the questions ahead of time. Um, I asked him if he wanted me to, but it, you know, we decided that it'll be better to just let's wing it and just see, because you, you really are such a, a smart guy when it comes to this stuff. And uh, you're leading a, a group of successful people. So let's talk about the the 31 day program. You know, I'm going to tell you the two things I got out of it. One thing was I got on the HRT treatments. I didn't realize how um, low it would make you feel if, if you're a man and you have very, very low hormones and low testosterone. You know, for me, that was probably the number one life changing thing. It was early on in, in the, the challenge. Um, so I did that. That was that was a life changer for me. Uh, the second one was your financing one, you, you know, where we go through all those finances and, you know, we have to go through the, the all your personal business finances. I think I wound up saving 50,000. Originally, the first day I was like, oh, this contract and this contract and this. like I literally saved $50,000 a year in, in expenses. Uh, and then I think later on, I did it again another day. You asked us to do it again. Uh, and I think I wound up saving another 20. So it was almost $70,000 in, in expenses. So that was me on top of other things that, that have been fantastic. Uh, one of my friends that I brought in, 
Uh, I think it was day two, whatever the, the challenge was. I mean, I know what it was, but uh, there was a challenge on day two. He had to confront something uh, and he called me and he said, I, I think I may get divorced. I think this may have just ended my marriage. And we worked through and I was like, well, wait a minute. I didn't I didn't expect that to happen. Like I didn't ask for that. And he said, no, this is good. Like this is growing. And then all of a sudden, about a week later, I saw a picture on social media, like two freaking lovebirds, two lovebirds. Like, and it's not just the social media. It's legit. No, no, of course, are, I'm thinking, right? I saw it. So yeah. then I called him and I was like, dude, is this yeah. real? And he's like, yeah, like things are going amazing. So, I mean, you know, you're changing people's lives. So you have the 31 day program. Again, my website, kevintatcher.com. I have the, li the link there, 31 days to become a better man. You can sign up for the class. Uh, I have four or five people in, in class seven. Uh, so click that. So let's talk about what we've created. So after you go through this 31 day class, you have two options now, right? There's the option of, you're either the elite elite and you get invited one direction or you you finish the class, but you want some maintenance and, and you're going to be with a larger group of people still doing amazing things. Tell us about the alliance and the brotherhood. Yeah. So pricing wise, you know, I had a guy who I would coached for a while. I invited him to join the 31 day class and he's he wrote me on WhatsApp and he said, I can't believe the is this price correct? He said, I honestly thought when you told me about the 31 days and you described it on that coaching call and told me to consider it and go to the website, you didn't tell me a price, Joel. And when I went to it, I was ready to pay $5,000. He says, that 31-day class costs 190 Is this right? Go, yeah, that's right. I'm not in this to make money. I make money off of other things. I'm not going to turn away money. And I want people to have a little bit of skin in the game. But then, yeah. So, Kevin, you gave me the idea to continue this with a maintenance program. Best idea ever because... Imagine you do this amazing 31 days and then everybody's gone. You can try to stay in touch. It just doesn't work. Even the WhatsApp of an old class, I leave it open. They can talk to each other. Nobody does. It dies off. The yeah. ones who continue, we've got two programs for them. And we started with the elite one. It's the brotherhood. And we just started it, what, three, four months ago? And we've got 40 guys in there right now. The cost of that, and I mentioned the cost up front because I want to share the cost of this. It's a joke. It's $75 to sign up for the brotherhood. These are the most elite guys. These are guys that I personally invite and I'm not inviting everyone. I invite the ones who really stood out, who shared amazing things, who had amazing progress during the time. Those are the guys I want to surround myself with. And then what do we do in those, in that program? What do you get for $75? Um, you have full access to every guy in there. You have access to me. These are my, these are my people. Everyone in that brotherhood is welcome to come visit me, hang out with me, work out with me, have a call with me. But it's more than that. We have Zoom calls regularly. We have all the year planned out already with two guys, who've, friends of mine, who've exited their businesses for over $100 million without partners. It's all in their pocket uh, to major companies that they sold to. Those are some of the guys that we're bringing to the group to present. And this isn't a recording. It's live on Zoom with those guys. We will record it for those who can't make it. And it's question and answer and get to know my friends. And what else are we doing in that group? It's a lot of stuff. We have an annual retreat that it's going to be our first annual. It's limited in the amount of people that could go to it. For this first one, it's only 18 people. It happens later this year. It's almost sold out. We've only got two slots. Um, that's a big one because we're planning an amazing event uh, of growth, of speakers, of you know, mind-opening things, uh, and in that brotherhood, that bonding that we're going to have. And it's really cool to see that these guys are visiting each other in other cities. They're either coming down to South Florida where I am, where you are, and they're visiting us and a few other guys that are here, but they'll go to Atlanta and they run into another, you know, they plan it. Uh, if you go to Idaho, we got a guy there. If you go to Utah, if you go to different places, we have people and we're starting, we're really growing this every single month. That's the elite of the elite. Um, they're the guys that I choose because they're the absolute most amazing guys. And one now, of the things I think is for, for $75 for less than a thousand dollars a year, you're surrounding yourself with the elite of the elite. These are, I, I always say it all the time, like in order to get into entrepreneurs organization, you need to be uh, a tax return. It used to be a million dollars. Now I think it's two or two and a half million. Like you're surrounding yourself with people that are vetted, people that are successful, people that have bought and sold businesses, people that earn, you know, sold their business for a hundred million dollars, people that have retired at an early age, people that were in the military and are just so um, focused and determined on, on things that they're doing. Uh, they're very, very structured. So you, you have a little mix of everything. You have people that are business coaches and life coaches. You have people that are in e-commerce, people that are in real estate, people that are in health and wellness. So it's like you get to handpick the people you want to surround yourself with.
Um, so, I mean, again, for, for $75, like it's almost a joke, you know, it, mm -hmm. it should be way more. I spend a lot more for EO. And the one thing I always say, like EO is great and, and I love it, but it's like, this is constant. Like this is every day we're communicating. If you need something, you're messaging someone, we're having a challenge where, so you're, you're really getting daily access to people that, that want to be better. And for the ones who don't want to use this on a daily basis, the way that I describe this to them, this is their insurance policy. And they've, nobody's quit. We've been in this for four months. Not one person has dropped out. There's something about that, something to be said there. The value must be there because if they want to drop out, all they got to do is, I don't know, cancel their subscription or tell me and I'll drop them out that day, right? So everybody's getting pressured into this and they're all staying. If they can't be busy, they're busy and they got stuff going on and they can only check in every few weeks or something. I keep reminding them, remember, this is an insurance policy. You're in this brotherhood. You've connected with these people on a deep level. You may not be busy. You may be busy and you're not talking to them every day. Look what will happen when you're going through something. Look how many guys are going to jump to help you. I'm mm -hmm. going to jump to help you. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. So, yeah, that's the brotherhood. Uh, amazing thing. It's changed my life. I'm so proud of being part of that. You came up with the idea. We both implemented on it. And it's going very, very well. And the next thing is the alliance. That's a brand new thing that you and I are working on to set up. We already set it up. Well, where the Brotherhood, by the way, I forgot to mention this, gets you like a 20% off on coaching with me, gets you 25% off new classes because a lot of these guys keep doing the classes. Now they're super happy they're going to get the 25% off. The, the Alliance is you get 10% off of coaching. You get 10% off future classes. You'll have access to some of the recordings that the Brotherhood does. You're not going to be there live with us. Um, what else does the Alliance have? You're still going to have that group of all the other guys in the Alliance, and everybody in the Alliance has finished the 31 days. So – it's, it's somewhat like the Brotherhood. It's You're allowed to do it if you've done the 31 days. You could just slide right into that. And it only costs $25 per month. It's a third of the price. All of these prices sound like a joke when I say them. I know the value. You know the value. So everybody who's in it laughs when they see like, oh, yeah, my card got renewed for $75 for this thing that is changing my life. Uh, so, yeah, those are the two programs that we have going on post uh, finishing the 31 days. The interesting part is it's not going to be $75 and $25 long and the class isn't going to be $199. At some point, it's going to yeah. grow yeah. and uh, it's going to wind up costing a lot more money. You but know, people, anybody who locks in at those prices, I told them all, I'll keep you at that price for life. Right. Yeah, of course. And, and you know, I tell people I've spent more money on garbage for $199 just to get a 15 minute call with you. And to spend 31 days with you alone, forget about the other 24 guys, is worth it. Like, I know who you are. I know how vetted you are because because through EO, like, just to hang out with someone from EO for people that can't join EO, like, I have access to a lot of these people. But for people that may not qualify to have access to people like that for $199 for 31 days is phenomenal. Like that alone is worth it. Even if you don't complete the class, even if you were just in it for 10 days, like it's so worth it just to get that call and, and meet some of these guys. You know, I obviously helped you create the other two programs because selfishly I tell them like I needed it. Like as soon as class was over, I was like super depressed. I'm like, this sucks. Like I did 31 days, now it's over. Like what else are we doing? So that's why we created, you know, the Brotherhood and, and now the Alliance for the people that want to continue on with greatness and people that want to surround themselves with greatness. I was telling one of my friends the other day, I was like, oh, you got to join. He's like, no, nah, I don't think it's for me. I said, neither does our friendship. I don't think it's for us either. Like, take the class. I think I could be friends with people who go through this program and at least prove that they want to try and be better. As opposed to the same old nonsense. You just made a point. Uh, I heard years ago that it's better to go into, to become friends with somebody after you've done business with them, as opposed to go into business with somebody you've been friends with, right? You go into business with somebody, a vendor, a supplier, you know, that sort of relationship, and you get to know how they are. If they're your customer, they pay on time. If they're their vendor, they deliver how they promised they would. That's how I like to make friends. Because I go, wow, this person, we've been through it a little bit here. We've been through the trenches. We saw when things got bad, how they took care of everything. They're an honorable person. I want to be friends with them. Because of that, I honestly can say now that most of my friends are in the Brotherhood. And then my friends are more and more coming from the Brotherhood. On top of that, we have now had some 
crisscrossing of investments in each other's businesses, uh, loans made to different people, not just myself, but uh, in all directions, the brotherhood's connecting, giving each other business. And we're not there to sell each other anything. It just happens. Who do you want to do business with? People that you've really gotten to know and become friends with. Now you want to keep doing more stuff with them. Absolutely. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. We're at the 50 minute mark. I appreciate you taking the time. Obviously, I get a chance to talk with you several times a day. Uh, hopefully the people watching found some value in this. I know I found value in it and hopefully they'll sign up for a class. I look forward to seeing them in the Brotherhood or the Alliance and and just watching men want to become better men. And if there's women watching this, send it to your man, send it to your boyfriend, your husband, your fiance, maybe your father. Send this to someone who is a man in your life that can do one little thing better just to become that much better every single day, a little bit better every day, and take away one or two things from the challenge that they can implement on a daily basis. So thank you for joining me in the studio today. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to, to talking with you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin.